My name's Tim, I run a digital marketing agency called Exposure Ninja and we help our clients generate more leads and sales from the internet. In this episode, we're going to be looking at seven B2B marketing strategies that anyone can use. And by the way, you can even use these if you're B2C, but that's going to get a little bit confusing. So let's just get straight in with the strategies. Actually, before we do that, though, we do need to cover a couple of things. You can call these mindset hacks or whatever, but these are really important to give context to everything that we're going to be looking at today. The first of those is that just because your competitors are boring doesn't mean that you have to be. A lot of what goes on in marketing in a particular market is because people copy each other. You get one business doing things one way, they grow, and then everyone copies them. And you get this kind of perpetual cycle of, in many cases, boring marketing that is copied over and over and over again. People make the assumption that just because other competitors are playing it safe, that they have to as well. Now, I wanna challenge you on this. Exposure Ninja is B2B. This is Exposure Ninja marketing. Most of our competitors are well boring and I've been called loads of things, but boring so far, touch wood, hasn't been one of them. So you don't have to be boring either. Misconception mindset hack number two is that you are selling to a business. You are never selling to a business. You are always selling to a person. And sometimes people buy on behalf of themselves. Sometimes people buy on behalf of their company. So when they're going home, they're buying Gymshark stuff, they're buying workout supplements, they're buying food and drink, they're buying fast moving consumer goods. So they're acting as a B2C target some of the time and a B2B target some of the time. And alongside these fun, cool things, they might be buying your waste management services when they're at work. But they are the same people and how we make decisions is basically the same. We are tapping into what makes people buy and what attracts them to certain businesses. They only have one brain and they only know one way to make decisions. So whilst there are definitely some subtleties and some major differences between B2B and B2C sales cycles, actually how we market to people doesn't need to be as different as most B2B businesses think it needs to. Most of the difference with B2B marketing is because you're targeting a smaller audience and you have much more specific messages that you need to give them because you're often working to a longer sales cycle. But in terms of the things that actually make people buy and get their interest, much more similar than people give them credit. Another key difference from B2B and B2C is that there are often more decision makers involved. And like I say, you might be working with people that have a much longer sales cycle, so you might need to focus more on training and education to help them learn how to buy before you actually sell to them. And that can have implications for some of the marketing channels and the strategies that you might gravitate towards. But we'll cover those in today's show. By the way, if you're enjoying this, here's something else that you might also enjoy. Our company, Exposure Ninja, helps our clients generate more leads and sales from their website. You might not be a client of Exposure Ninja. In fact, statistically speaking, the majority of the world still isn't a client of Exposure Ninja, much to our intense disappointment. But we still want to help you. So if you want to help generating more leads and sales through your website, then what you can do is request a free website and marketing review from the team here at Exposure Ninja. All you need to do is go to a website. Yes, it's really that simple. We just go to ExposureNinja.com. We'll then ask you a few questions about your business. Once you've answered those, we will then prepare a review of your website, your digital marketing and your competitors. We'll take a look at what you're doing well, which you could be doing more of. We'll also find the low hanging fruit, the stuff that you could improve in order to generate more leads and sales through your website. We'll do the same for your competitors, seeing what's working well in the space, which you could exploit and what's working poorly, which you probably want to stay away from. We'll put all of this information into a 15 minute video, which we send over to you by email, usually within two to three working days. It's fantastic. So go to ExposureNinja.com Click the big button to request your free website and digital marketing review today. Okay, so thing number one is to get super clear about what you do and who you do it for. There is a misconception that we've noticed amongst a lot of our B2B clients that because they're selling to a more experienced audience or they're selling to people who they perceive know what they want more because they are professional in that area, that they can afford to somehow dial down the clarity of their marketing message. 
This could not be further from the truth. In fact, let me talk through an example. So MailChimp is an email marketing platform and they sell to businesses. There are so many email marketing platforms out there. They are 10 a penny and there's very little to choose between a lot of them. But the messaging that MailChimp uses, and we can see this very clearly when we look at the headline, which says, build your brand, sell online all in one place. Our marketing and commerce tools work together to help you run your business. This is very different positioning to where their competitors are, which is basically we help you improve your deliverability. We help you get your emails to out to people. We help you automate the sequences. MailChimp is about building your brand and selling, integrating the marketing and commerce tools. So this is a B2B space, but they have carved out their own niche within this. How much of this is about having a differentiated product can be argued, but that doesn't really matter. This is about making sure that when customers say, why should I choose you rather than one of your competitors, you have a clear and compelling answer. If you need more help with this, we have another video all about how to build your positioning statement. This is what this is really all about. Well, what if you're selling something that is literally identical to other people or that your audience perceives as being identical? Well, you can still differentiate and you you really should. Here is one of our fantastic clients, Chas. So how do they differentiate given that their customers might not be as educated as knowing the differences between what Chas is offering and competitors? So what they do is they rely on credibility to persuade the visitor to use them rather than competitors. So notice how there's all sorts going on here. From their headline saying, we are the UK's award-winning and leading, from the use of the FIFO Platinum Awards and the number of reviews that they've got, and also the logos and names of the reputable clients that they've worked with. So what they're doing here, and what we're doing when we built this site was helping them to differentiate themselves from their competitors. This is really important in a B2B setting and so many companies don't give it the time it deserves because they think, well, our audience is educated, so they're going to understand the differences between the options. Not so. Your audience is just as busy as you are and any help you can give them to choose you is going to work in your favor. Strategy numero two is to get your B2B SEO strategy nailed. Now, there are loads of similarities between B2B SEO and B2C SEO. Don't get me wrong. Content, links, relevance, these are still really important. In fact, this is the fundamentals of whatever SEO you're gonna be doing. SEO is all about ranking pages of information with links. This is what SEO is. But there are some important subtleties with the targeting and the strategy that you're following with B2B SEO versus B2C. Consideration number one is that you're often gonna be selling to a smaller audience. For many of our B2B clients, that small search volume isn't necessarily an issue because they have a high average order value. So it's still worth targeting those phrases to get those people onto the site. The other main consideration with B2B SEO is the sales cycle. Like we said in the intro, the sales cycle tends to be longer for a lot of B2B businesses, which means that they're helping the potential customer go through more of a journey from awareness, interest, desire, all the way through to action. So what this often means for B2B SEO is that you're targeting more informational terms. And even some of the terms that you think might be commercial, i.e. might immediately lead to a purchase, actually you'll often see there are informational pages showing up in the search results. What are you talking about, Tim? Let me explain. So let's say, for example, that you were looking for a chatbot for customer service and you go onto Google and you type in chatbot for customer service. You might reasonably expect that this is going to show you a page of chatbots and all of these pages have been optimized for chatbots for customer service and they're going to be people trying to sell you a chatbot. You'd be wrong. What you're gonna see instead is that the majority of the search results on that page are informational. These are articles. They are blog pages, they're knowledge-based pages, they're information about chatbots for customer service. So what's going on here is Google completely lost its mind and it's showing the wrong sort of search results? Possibly, unlikely. What's actually happened here is that the people searching for these terms have clicked on these sorts of pages over and over and over again. So Google has got the picture that actually what people are really looking for is information in this scenario. 
So if you're trying to build visibility for a term like this, what you'll want to do is you'll want to play the information, you'll want to play the long form content game. You'll want to provide some really in-depth information about this topic. And then if you want to sell your chatbot for customer service, what you need to do then is either get someone to sign up for some sort of email thing from your article or link your article through to the pages where they can actually sign up for the service or both. And that's how you're going to turn that informational searcher into a customer. But you've got to recognize the intent behind the search and what people actually want according to where they're at in the buying cycle. Tip toi, social media. Yes, even for B2B, social media. Now, let me get this quote right. IDG research shows that 84% of C-level and VP-level buyers turn to social media when purchasing. Now, to be honest, that's worded in a way that I don't really understand, and I definitely don't understand how that was put together. But what I do know is this, that big boss person that you're trying to sell to is taking their phone into the toilet, and when they do that, they are scrolling social. Everyone is doing it and that means if they are there you need to be there too i mean obviously not there but you know that connection with your audience is really important now you might imagine that a b2b buyer is somehow kind of disconnected from what they're buying they're just kind of doing this on behalf of work and they don't really care actually according to google b2b buyers have a significantly higher emotional connection with their vendors than b2c customers now, the trouble with social, if you're a B2B, you've tried social and you're just like, ah, oh, there's no way to talk about waste management that is fun. The trouble is that a lot of B2B companies tend towards facts and stats. Yes, they go straight for the logical argument. This approach doesn't tend to work that well on social because on social, people are typically heading there for stories. They're heading there for personal. Now, this great example from HubSpot shows that actually there are ways of winning on social, even if you're a B2B company. You'll notice, for example, that in this video, a lot of it is kind of personality led. Like me. I'm not trying to bombard you with facts and stats and read from our latest white paper because that is dry as you like and people just aren't into that stuff. Now, not to get all inception on you, but the video that you're watching now is B2B marketing. And we've intentionally made this in a way that's a little bit more like entertainment, a bit more like vlogger style than it is some kind of traditional white paper presentation with me stood in front of a, a big white wall with a lectern and slides. And you're probably watching or listening to this on a platform, which is B2C predominantly, whether it's a podcast or video. Most of our audience are bored and confused by marketing information, so we're trying to do the opposite. And you can do this too. Even if your audience understands what they're buying, you can still educate. You can still educate and interest them, and you should. So don't be afraid to be the personality oasis in the desert of boring. Your audience might be craving it. They probably are. Tip number four, video. We're seeing a lot more B2Bs using video. You've even got companies like Adobe doing things like this, where they're actually using vloggers. Now, if you look at the time spent on each platform, YouTube is killing everyone, everyone. People think TikTok's hot, YouTube is crushing it. Instagram, YouTube is crushing it. Why is YouTube crushing everyone? Because people love video. It gives us the opportunity to move from the channels that we have on our TVs where they're programmed by someone who doesn't know us. We can build our own TV channels on YouTube. This is amazing and you can do exactly this as well, even though you're B2B. So whilst Adobe is using vloggers, you've got videos like this one, which are filmed in a sort of vlogger style rather than a typical corporate style. You can also really mix things up just like Caterpillar have done in this video. Thank you.
That guy kind of looks like he's saying, what am I doing here, right? And by the way, my own personal highlight from this was in the YouTube comments where Binky McFartnugget says, great, just what the internet needs, another cat video. LOL. Great one, Binky McFartnuggets. And here's the thing about video. Most B2B companies either do something really, really cool, they just don't realize it because it's so normal to them, or they enable something that is really, really cool, which you can show people. People are interested in the most crazy things, aren't they? And often B2Bs just think, yeah, we, you know, we're really boring because we just make these little widgets. And then you find that the little widgets are like built into the wings of NASA space shuttles. And you're like, hold on, you have something that every teenager is fascinated in. Let's just show more of that. Let's talk to your engineers about the tolerances of working in outer space. Let's Let's showcase a bit more about what makes you cool because in every company there are people that are seriously passionate about what they do. Some people don't think that pay-per-click advertising is that sexy. We do, we think it's awesome. Some people think that a website is just a website. We don't think that. We think that the difference between a website that's rubbish and a website that's awesome is an absolute golf and a game changer and the single most important thing in the entire world. And it's that passion, it's that interest which keeps people hooked, not necessarily the topic. So show it off and do some videos. And yes, you could be shouting into a camera in your office. B2B turbo level up booster number five is B2B content marketing. Now for B2Bs, content marketing is not king, but it's really important. And the particular part of content marketing that is important for B2Bs are blogs and knowledge bases. We've already talked about the fact that you're often gonna be targeting informational terms. You're gonna be targeting buyers that need to go through an education process in order to buy. That makes your blog or your knowledge base really important. This is understanding the questions that your customers or clients might have prior to their purchase and providing information that helps to answer those questions. Now you can take this to whatever level you want. On the Shopify website, for example, you'll see that they are teaching people how to build a business. They're teaching people about e-commerce. Obviously, Shopify is an e-commerce platform that people can use. So they've got stuff about how to use Shopify, but they've also got stuff about how to build a bigger business. And what are they doing here? They're trying to attract people who are in the process of setting up a business. They're trying to attract them to get them on the Shopify site, because if they can do that, then when they come to choose an e-commerce platform, they're more likely to choose Shopify you can do exactly this yourself. Now, you don't necessarily have to get loads of celebrities in the space and compile these free courses that people can sign up for and stuff like that. This is more about understanding what's going on in your customer's head, whether it's specifically about the thing that you sell or whether it's about the step before that or even the step after that. How can you provide information? How can you collect the expertise that you have inside your business and also that you have throughout your customer base and provide this in a way that gets more customers onto your site, whether they're ready to purchase or not. Another B2B example, Salesforce. And by the way, if you're watching the video of this on YouTube, check out this site. This is full of cartoons. It looks so B2C, it's not even funny. This looks like freaking the cartoon page on Netflix, right? But what Salesforce has done is they've built a blog on their site, which is full of information. It's basically a magazine for people that are their potential customers. They've got things like how to reopen your business, a guide to reopening. They've got uh, stories to inspire you from some of their trailblazing customers. They've got um, testimonials and case studies from businesses that they've worked with where they share tips and strategies that they've used to grow their business. This is basically a magazine for business growth. They provide this to get people on their site in the first place, but also to have the Salesforce customers come onto this site and get this level of information and entertainment and advice shows that Salesforce cares about their growth. So this is a really mature and high investment approach to content marketing. Now you might not want to go all the way through to setting up a full magazine. Our client Mint Formations here has a knowledge base on their site all about how to set up a company because they sell company formation services. And by the way, if you need a company set up, mintformations.co.uk, great option. So they are restricting their content marketing to people that are likely to become a customer in the sort of short to medium term, which is a great way to get started with this if you don't want to go full in to running basically a media property designed for your target customers. 
So think, what are our people into and what sort of information can we give them? And this is a pure B2C strategy, right? We see this all day from massive e-commerce brands, but this is something that works fantastically well for B2Bs. And by the way, if you're getting the impression that the key to great B2B marketing is actually to be a little bit more B2C, you're not wrong. Hey, you may have picked up a little secret there. Tip number six is B2B pay-per-click also requires some important considerations. Now, yes, pay-per-click advertising, Google search advertising on Google ads is remarkably similar for any business because you're basically bidding on certain keywords, you're running ads, you're driving people through to a landing page. But for B2B, there are some really important considerations. Firstly, the language that your target customers are using. Now, sometimes we'll have a B2B client that sells something specific to B2B, but actually there is a B2C version of this. For example, let's say that you're selling waste management service. Your B2B customers will call this waste management. Your B2C may call it rubbish collection or trash collection or something like that. So it's really important that if you're only serving the B2B side of this market, you exclude the B2C audience. You can do this through the keywords that you target, the keywords that you don't target, i.e. the keywords that you add as negatives, but also through the copy in your ads. It's important that you differentiate and disqualify people from clicking on your ads. Otherwise, you're gonna waste that ad spend and potentially, if they end up converting because they don't really understand what they're requesting information about, you end up potentially informing Google's advertising algorithms that this is more of the person that you want when you really don't want that person. So trim out the B2C stuff through the keywords and the ad copy disqualification. Often people searching for a B2B solution will ask for things like supplier or agency or solution or management. And there are often those little keyword modifiers that they use, which signal that they are a business customer rather than a customer customer, rather than a person at the pub customer. Consumer, I think is the word I was looking for there. Final tip before the bonus tip, email marketing for B2B. Again, this is something that a lot of B2Bs completely write off because they think, well, we're not Amazon. We don't need to send out emails to our customers. No, no, no. Terrible misconception. Wash your mouth out with soap and battery acid. <laughs> it's a little harsh, Tim. It's a bad misconception. Every B2B can be using email marketing. Now, when we get an email marketing client, we find loads and loads of low hanging fruit. The first thing that we'll do is go and have a look at the emails they're sending. Often they're just kind of generic broadcast stuff. It's just about the business, about, you know, the waste management company has changed a soil pipe in the warehouse. Nobody cares. The much better approach to take with your email marketing is to segment your audience into people who have bought from you, people who've bought particular products or services from you, and then you can tailor the stuff that they're getting. So we'll build automations, for example, for people that have purchased something to remind them when it's time to repurchase and to remind them to leave a review and that type of thing. We'll build automations based on particular articles that people have visited or whatever it might be, okay? So take a mature approach to email marketing and don't just say that email marketing isn't going to work for us just because we have a relatively small number of customers or whatever. There is so much opportunity inside email marketing. We've got loads of videos on email marketing with a fantastic Abby from Exposure Ninja. So go and check them out. I'm not going to duplicate all of that stuff here, but trust me that email marketing for B2Bs is amazing and you want to invest the proper attention there. Okay, so there you have it. Seven B2B marketing strategies that anyone can use. Quick recap. Don't mind if I do. And then your bonus tip. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten. By the way, if you're enjoying this, here's something else that you might also enjoy. Our company, Exposure Ninja, helps our clients generate more leads and sales from their website. You might not be a client of Exposure Ninja. In fact, statistically speaking, the majority of the world still isn't a client of Exposure Ninja, much to our intense disappointment. But we still want to help you. So if you want to help generating more leads and sales through your website, then what you can do is request a free website and marketing review from the team here at Exposure Ninja. All you need to do is go to a website. Yes, it's really that simple. We just go to ExposureNinja.com. We'll then ask you a few questions about your business. Once you've answered those, we will then prepare a review of your website, your digital marketing and your competitors. We'll take a look at what you're doing well, which you could be doing more of. We'll also find the low hanging fruit, the stuff that you could improve in order to generate more leads and sales through your website. 
We'll do the same for your competitors, seeing what's working well in the space which you could exploit and what's working poorly which you probably want to stay away from. We'll put all of this information into a 15 minute video which we send over to you by email usually within two to three working days. It's fantastic. So go to ExposureNinja.com, click the big button to request your free website and digital marketing review today. So first principle, we said don't be boring. Just because your competitors are doesn't mean that you have to be. Second thing, don't overthink this. We all buy as businesses as well as consumers. The process that we go through and the marketing stuff that works is actually remarkably similar for B2B to B2C. Number one, make it compelling. Make sure you understand your positioning clearly and you can communicate it to potential customers. Think of the MailChimp example. Any way that you can differentiate yourself from your competitors, you're doing something good. Number two, B2B SEO requires some important tweaks, namely to target informational content being much more top of funnel a lot of the time, knowing that we're gonna have a longer buying cycle, usually in B2B than B2C. Also, don't be afraid of those keywords which have lower search volume if you have a very high average order value. Number three, B2B social. Again, don't be boring. Just because you're B2B doesn't mean that you can talk facts and stats and have people interested in your social feeds. Think of the big boss person on their phone while they're on the toilet. What's getting their attention? It's probably not the percentage cost saving that your waste management service gives them over dumping it into the sea. You don't need to be filming dance TikToks. That's horrible. Nobody wants to see that. But you do need to be interesting and you do need to play on stories and entertainment a little bit more than you would otherwise. Number four, videos. Think about the sort of videos that people actually like to watch. How can you tell a story about what your business does well? Just because you're B2B doesn't mean that it's boring. You have passion inside your business. You need a way of letting that out. Number five, content marketing. Think about those blogs and knowledge bases. How can you give your target customers information which is useful and relevant to them? Educate your audience, attract their attention, keep their attention. That is basically the formula for content marketing success. Then we talked about B2B PPC and the difference, the important subtle differences sometimes between the PPC keywords that we're targeting for B2B versus B2C. The use of those words like solutions, management, agency, and making sure we're not casting too wide a net and picking up some consumer keywords just because they have higher search volumes. Also, don't forget that you should be disqualifying consumers in your ad copy if there's any risk that you're going to be picking them up through the keywords that you're targeting. Final tip was email. It's just a no-brainer for everyone. So check out our related videos all about email if you're interested in more information about this. All right, final super top secret tip. You remember I said at the start, I'd give you a free tip about how to use case studies. Well, here's how most businesses use case studies. And for B2Bs, case studies are really important. So a lot of B2Bs will use case studies like Chatbot. And Chatbot have a case study on their website which says, Valley Driving School reaches 94% customer satisfaction with Chatbot. And they will publish these on their website. Now, I can only assume that they have some sort of deal with Valley Driving School where they are trying to promote their business or they are trying to attract lots of other driving schools. Because other than that, from a marketing perspective, this sort of case study presentation is supremely suboptimal, as we would say. Why is it suboptimal? Well, unless I'm a driving school, I might look at this case study and say, not relevant for me. I'm not a driving school. Also, reaches 94% customer satisfaction. Well, in fact, in our business, we have a more than 94% customer satisfaction, actually. So reaching 94% would be a washout for us. Or we might not care about customer satisfaction, in which case I don't care about this case study. So what they've done is they've taken one specific situation and they framed it in a way that there's a high percentage chance that people won't care, or even if they do care, they might assume it's not relevant for them because they are not in the same business as this company, or they're not in the same territory or whatever. So there is a better way to frame this case study, and that is to turn it into tips. So to turn it into important information. So let's say that your chatbot helps people improve their customer service. Well, what you might do is you might write a guide on how to improve your customer service score by 15%. Five ways to improve your customer service score to get customers give you five-star reviews. 
Right, this is something which has broad appeal. People are interested in that sort of topic and there is a clear perceived benefit to them of reading that case study rather than reading about some random driving school in a place they've never heard of who has used your service to do something they may or may not care about. So let's say that you write the guide on how to get customers to leave you five star reviews. Well, one of the tips might be you want to improve the speed of communication once someone gets in contact with you to when they get a resolution to their question. This is something that a chatbot would do. And in fact, here is an example of a business that used the chatbot to do exactly that. Another tip might be, you might want to make sure that people can contact you from any device that suits them. And by the way, this is something that a chatbot can do. So you see how you can take the same information, but present it in a way that actually means something to potential customers and get a much higher click through and engagement rate with it than if you just stick something up that seems like a thinly veiled promotion for the business that you're talking about. So there you have it, the secret tip. And don't forget the other secret tip I gave you, licorice all sorts of conferences. So I hope you've enjoyed today's show. If you have, please like, comment, subscribe, engage with this. If you're listening to the podcast, leave us a review, subscribe to the show. If you're watching this on YouTube, then leave us a comment. What's your favorite takeaway? What's the best B2B marketing that you've ever seen? And if you've got any questions, please do ping us. We are happy to answer them. Until next time, see you soon. Oh, by the way, don't forget to request your free website and marketing review if you haven't already. Laters.